Much to the crew's disappointment, it looks like USS Gudgeon will be at sea for Christmas and New Year's. We are departing Pearl Harbor on December 23rd, 1942. USS Gudgeon received some modifications while in port. The primary and most notable modification is the new cut down conning tower. This was done to reduce the silhouette of the boat and should help us remain hidden during nighttime surface attacks, which are becoming a preferred tactic among skippers. Additionally, we received improved air search and surface search radars. Our previous set was on the fritz during our last patrol and almost resulted in disaster. Hopefully, this new air search radar set is malfunction free. Fingers crossed. This is my fourth war patrol, and as a result, I will most likely receive some stuffy desk job or something similar after this patrol. Subskippers are limited to four patrols. The thought process is, after four war patrols, captains could get too aggressive or start playing things way too safe. Some commanders have been able to talk their way into a fifth war patrol. By the looks of things, I will not get one, however. Thankfully, I am getting one hell of a send-off. For this patrol, USS Gudgeon will head to the Bungo Straits and conduct anti-shipping operations for seven days. As usual, we will stop at Midway Island to top off on fuel before proceeding to our patrol area. Our patrol area is going to be pretty hot, lots of enemy traffic, so there will be plenty of attack opportunities for us and the Japanese. Also, a rather infamous Japanese destroyer is known to patrol the Bungo Straits. Hopefully, we don't encounter the skipper of that thing. After a wonderful little Christmas, which included all the festivities, we arrived at Midway Island. The journey from Pearl to Midway took around four days. We made a quick pit stop to refuel and proceeded on our 3,200 nautical mile journey to the Japanese home islands. We are around 1,400 nautical miles away from our patrol area. However, there seems to be an interesting development to the south of our position. A large enemy task force, centered around a carrier, is reportedly 700 nautical miles away and heading towards USS Gudgeon. We will attempt to intercept, of course. There is a catch, however. The enemy task force is 700 nautical miles away. The chances of catching them are slim, but worth a shot. After searching for three days, it seems we have failed to establish contact with the enemy task force. Gudgeon resumed her course of 285 degrees to continue on to the patrol area. At long last, we have arrived off the Bungo Straits. Now the hunt will commence. Enemy aircraft have been routinely pestering us. As a result, we have been spending a good portion of the day submerged. It did not take long in the patrol area before our hydrophone operator picked up an enemy warship, medium speed, bearing 010 degrees. We may have an opportunity to engage the contact. Hello everybody, Wolfpack here, and welcome back aboard USS Gudgeon for our second war patrol. We are currently at periscope depth and we have a enemy warship detected, heading straight for us bearing 010 according to our hydrophone operator. And it looks like the warship is still on that bearing. Let's go to our periscope and take a look. As you can see, the seas are a little choppy here. The seas are a little choppy. Oh, it'll be interesting to uh, attack a warship in these seas, and honestly, I may not attack it at this point. Uh, the patrol has just started. We have just reached our patrol area, and depending on how large this warship is, let's see, I cannot make it out just yet. Uh, depending on how large this warship is, we might not engage. It's still quite a while away. As you can see, our patrol area is near the Bungo Straits. We are going to head up there. I wanted to kind of, you know, patrol the coast of Kyushu here. I figured that would be uh, a good place to patrol. Anyway, we'll see if this destroyer gets a little closer. Apparently, yeah, according to our hydrophone operator, it is heading straight this way. 
lower our periscope while we are at it as well. And it looks like it, yeah, it's heading straight for us. Okay, let's see if we can make it out now. Up scope. And I am looking, there she is. I think I made it out there. Yep, that is her. That is her. It looks like an older Japanese destroyer. Honestly, probably not worth firing at. Let's bring up the recognition manual just to take a look here. It's definitely going to be towards the back. It's not a sub chaser. It's a little larger than that. Yeah. Nine th 900 tons, excuse me. Top speed's 36 knots, though. Quite quick. Yeah, well, uh, I believe this is what it is. As far as I can tell currently. So we're just not going to engage. Definitely an older one like that. Down scope. Let's drop the boat down to 120 feet. And rig for silent running. Once again, our hydrophone operator has detected a vessel. This one seems to be an enemy freighter. USS Gudgeon will investigate. Well, we have another enemy ship on our hands. This one seems to be an enemy freighter, so it is definitely a worthy target. We go to our attack scope here. We can see if we can try to make visual on the enemy. Uh, it is somewhere up in front of us. Let's check the hydrophone. Here we go, zero, three, two degrees. He's off here somewhere. Let's raise our scope all the way. The waves are quite choppy, unfortunately. It seems to be a lone merchant contact. And, uh, it would be a perfect ship to use the deck gun on, however, in the sea state that is not practical we are currently establishing the target speed here we've timed it for around a minute and it looks like 15 seconds now and there we go there's our contact we'll see how fast it's going i think we'll utilize the dicko cane method and also we'll probably use the stern torpedo tubes here uh, just to fire those off and get them out of the way. All right, let's use a little bit of time compression here as we continue to see how fast this target is going. Passing two minutes and 30. It does not look like this ship is moving fast at all. Okay, coming in on three minutes and mark. There we go. All right, how fast are you going, my friend? Three and a half knots. Wow, geez, that is extremely slow. I'm shocked. On a heading of two zero zero. Oh, this will be super easy to set up a stern torpedo shot. Yes, sir. We'll be able to do that rather easily. And if the target's only going three and a half knots, we have plenty of time. I'm looking at this, this may be another one of those uh, paddle ships. Merchants. Yay Maru, we have, we have sunk a few of these in the past. And yeah, I think that, I think this is her. Two rather large and distinct masts here. I think I can see the paddle there. And that would explain why she is only going three and a half knots in these seas, considering her top speed is 10 knots. But, you know, it is a fairly large vessel, 3,000 tons. I'll take it. Definitely something I would like to torpedo. And considering there's no enemy warships around, 
be able to do so quite easily. All right, let's turn that off. We're going to drop our scope, position ourselves, and lay and wait for the enemy to cross our path. Okay, the target is closing in nicely. Let's identify it properly now that we are nice and close. Pull this out, range to target. We'll just pull that all the way to the maximum here. Angle on bow is going to be 80 degrees to port. Set, make sure we are utilizing tube number seven. And our target speed is three and a half knots set that in as well now we want to turn our scope to a bearing of 190 this is where we will mark it and now we just lay and wait for the target to continue to close on in we can check this on the map and yep yeah, that looks pretty darn good to me uh we are pretty close as well we're starting to put some distance between us and the freighter i do want to man battle stations and drop our scope all hands, man your battle stations. Okay, perfect. Just want to make sure our periscope is not spotted in these rough seas. It is rather easy to broach. We are going to use tube number seven and tube number eight here. Yeah, uh, we'll fire at low speeds, contact pistols. There we go. And you know what? We can uh, we can get a little bit of angle going in here to help our Mark 14s along, and also speed up the attack process. There we go, rudder amidships, and let's slow down to one third speed. All right, ten degrees to go, up scope. Open tube seven and eight. Two torpedoes is probably overkill, but you know how it is. Uh, I'll set the torpedo depth. It looks like the draft of this guy is 15 feet. We'll set it to, we'll set one a little deeper, seven feet. And then one at minimum depth. We'll fire tube number seven first at the forward mast. The target is about to cross. Oh my gosh. Actually, okay. We'll set it at minimum depth. Look at how that ship is bouncing around. There's a pretty good chance our torpedo will just run under the target. Yikes. Okay, tube seven can't see and can't make the target out make sure this is in properly i hope so all right we are good to fire we'll aim for the mast three two one fire all right tube seven is away this runtime is not going to be accurate all right tube number eight we'll actually just go straight for the funnel fire Tube 8 is away. Down scope. There we go, two torpedo impacts up scope. That was fantastic. Had a pretty massive explosion. However, oh wow, look, there's a probably a three, four inch gun on the stern platform there. She does not seem to be going down after two hits. I'm fairly certain that will be more than enough for this type of ship, but we'll see here. 
we shall see. Let's go ahead and begin maneuvering away. All ahead, two thirds down scope. I'm sure she'll take on water and go down. I would be shocked if this uh, 3,000 ton ship uh, continues uh, on after two Mark 14s with like 500 pounds of Torpex <laughs> slammed into it. Uh, we shall see though. Well, folks, I have to admit, I am quite shocked. The ship is still paddling along. It is currently 546. So it has been uh, over an hour here. I think we are going to send another torpedo her way. We're currently making seven knots underwater. So we are easily overtaking our friend here. We're going to f try to fire one more torpedo. Hopefully that finishes her off. We will shoot tube number seven, contact pistol. We'll set it for six feet. The The target is definitely a bit lower in the water. However, uh, yeah, she's still maintaining six knots, or three knots, excuse me. I did check. Oh, there we go. There we go. She is actually going down. I was, I was legitimately prepared to set up for another torpedo shot here. I was like, man, this thing is... Uh, taking forever wow okay she probably had an explosion or something and now she's just bow up okay i'll take it uh, patience is definitely rewarded Well, that is going to do it for today's episode. I do hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and comment, as it really does help out the channel. But until next time, this is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I'll see you all on the next one.